today we are drawing poses and we are not only going to be going over how to draw people and the basic shapes and whatnot, we are also going to be drawing them in dynamic poses. Like for example, these are just two standing characters, but when we look at this one, it's a very um, straight and very like there's there's nothing going on right it's just it's pretty boring they're standing there waving hello while this one there's there's more flow and and there's a curve so we can call we call this the line of action you can see the movement that it's in so the line of action here is like this this nice curve this is still just a standing pose but it's more it's more interesting because it's not it's not even it's also asymmetrical you can say it's not symmetrical like this you can say this side is mirroring this side almost 100 percent while this side it's curved the arm and the leg is pointing more downward up on this side while this arm is going up this leg is going down, so there's like, there's lots of movement. I drew some poses yesterday, so I, I actually like this one because it's just a standing pose, but they're holding their skirt and it gives a lot of movement as well. So that's another thing you can keep in mind, right? It's not only the pose itself that can make it dynamic, but things like clothing, flowing, flowing clothes, or if you're drawing a superhero, a cape and so on, hair. Um, if you draw it in a certain way, it will really help with that dynamic feeling. So when you're drawing a dynamic pose, you can figure out the line of action. So for this one specifically, they are we're like leaning, leaning to the left a bit. And this is just the overall, overall feeling of the direction of the pose. So once I have this, I can figure out where's the head gonna go? And then this is where it gets a little bit more interesting because in this body, everything is straight. All of these lines here, like the head is straight, head is straight, shoulders are, shoulders are straight, hips are straight, the knees are straight. It's all like line after line after line. So another thing that you wanna look for in a dynamic pose is these lines will change. They'll, they'll change direction. So for example, in this pose, the, the shoulders, one is higher than the other. So I'm gonna sketch in that egg shape for the torso. And then if I were to sketch in this line, the line, these purple lines that I drew in on our practice body, the shoulder here is going down and the shoulder here is going up. So that already creates a sense of interest so far. And then going down the body, remember biggest shapes first. So I got the head, I got the torso, next is the pelvis. The other time I drew this trapezoid shape, but I'm gonna use more of a underwear shape. So when I'm using this shape and I'm emphasizing this line, you guys don't have to do this. I just want to really highlight this so you guys can see. But you can see the line of the shoulders. This one's going up this way, while the line of the pelvis is going the opposite way. And then those are our biggest shapes. They are pretty much Done. So now we can connect these shapes. So on this side, since we're getting this bend, you'll get more of a like squish. <laughs> okay, so it's more like a, a pushing and then pulling feeling. And there's actually a name for this. It's called contrapposto, which is the exaggeration. <laughs> It can be very exaggerated where one side there's this there's this area where it's closing closing in while the other side is stretching and then you kind of get this macaroni shape from the torso either a macaroni shape or a flower flower sack that's what other people call it or pillowcase it can be whatever you want but the point is that it's squishing and then stretching on one side Yep, so I just connected the torso to the pelvis. So remember this line of action that we had? Just because um, it doesn't mean that we have to follow the, the legs exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna start by coming up. Where do I want this leg to go? So I have the stick line, stick line here. So maybe instead of this example, I'm going to make this leg bend. A quick way to measure um, the body parts that you've drawn is like if I made this thigh this long I can compare this leg to the other one 
and figure out uh, maybe this is still this is a little too long <laughs> and then I can adjust it so it matches okay so I'm just gonna put in some feet I find that their head is a little bit too um, tipped over to this side so I'm gonna adjust that so for the arm going out and remember look for that relationship so these elbows so from here uh, we just want to solidify this pose we want to flesh it out and add in those 3d shapes cylinders are the main shape that we are using for arms and legs so for this part of the leg I want to draw a cylinder going to and then I can connect them together to create the knee so 3d shapes cylinders cylinders I'm looking at my pose and I feel like I can push this leg a bit further back. I want to add in cylinders here. So I'm going to finish this up and then after this pose is finished, I'm just going to quickly draw some clothes on top and we can turn this into a character, right? Because I'm, I'm sure for most of us, when we learn how to draw human bodies and poses and so on, we want to draw them as characters, not just a faceless pose, right? Uh, a very simple way to draw hands is start with the palm like this. So it's like a, a rectangle shape and we can add in the thumb. And for fingers, if you're just drawing a closed hand, think of a mitten and then divide the fingers into four. And that's a, that's a very simple hand. It's just that this, instead of an open palm, I want it to be closed. So I can draw in a simple, simple shape. Still thinking of that mitten. It's a little too simple for now, but at least it has more detail than before. So I'm gonna take this pose here and start fleshing it out and turning it into a character. So I'm gonna start adding in other details like a face, hair, so I'm drawing a face. We have the shape that we already started with. We just need to sketch in some guidelines. So if I just wanted to give them like anime eyes, I'll try to, I'm gonna exaggerate this and really make her look like a typical anime schoolgirl with big eyes. I can give her like some kind of school uniform. So remember uh, this example that I did? Uh, try to figure out the flow of the clothing. I could have the clothing fl um, flowing this way because this side of her body is having the stretching movement. So that means the, the clothes would be stretching on the side as well. You could also imagine like Oh, is in this drawing that you're doing, is there a wind? <laughs> so maybe the direction of the wind is going this way um, or this way. And then that way you can have any clothing going like that. So even when you're drawing clothes, use the simple shapes first. So let's say I wanted to draw a pleated skirt. I want to start with the basic shape. So a skirt can be seen as like a trapezoid, just like that. A very simple way to draw skirts is to draw the two parts where it starts and where it ends. So we have the part where it starts up here and then the part where it ends, we can have some more fun with it and make it a little bit more flowy. And then once you have that, you can go from the, from the side that starts and then connect it together. So it's just things in the sketch that I uh, later see, like, oh, the arm is a little too big, this and that. That's what I'm changing um, in the line art because I have the opportunity to do so. Just added in a ribbon. Uh, I should quickly add in some hair because she's been bald for this entire time. <laughs> okay. So hair can also add volume to the head, 
But when we see like anime characters and cartoons, well, especially anime characters, their heads look really big because they have really voluminous hair too. It's not only that their heads are bigger than the average person, it's also the hair. Well, I'll outline this hand as a, as a quick demo as well. 